had to go out paying bills, internet connection, computer fees. So anybody interested in supporting this channel could use a little help, could use a little funding. So you can donate, check my channel out. There's an email and PayPal. Anybody that's feeling a little generous and a little supportive, support is definitely welcome. But if you can't, that's okay. It's a free channel. The universe will provide somehow. Now, the purpose of this video is to respond to um, one of my subscribers that was um, can't wait to get into another dimension and you know was asking the question do we not need to die to get there <laughs> the reason why we're dying is the very reason why we're not jumping into a different dimension um, lots of people think that's where the answer is lots of religious people think you gotta die to be saved and the whole purpose of you know being saved is actually being saved <laughs> Saved from what? Saved from freaking, you know, death. You know, kind of look at why everybody sort of doesn't want to die. You know, like God gave you this body. Kind of wants you to worship that body. And it's your job to make sure that body lives. <laughs> That's why we have this drive to live. So to get into this other dimension, um, you got to live through it. It's not going to come through dying. You have sort of failed your own personal test if you died, and you failed the oneness test if you die, because we are all global. We're all a oneness. Now, in order to understand different dimensions, and I haven't seen anybody talk about this, so it's like putting the puzzles together. Everybody should be reading their own self-help books, because that's what I did. <laughs> you know, you give somebody enough problems, and they, you know, you, you force me to try and solve every problem. I'll read everybody's self-help books and I'll read everybody's science books and everybody's religious books and when something clicks like something actually works then you kind of find the answer and there's a lot of contradictions so it is a you know if everybody read their own self-help book if everybody read their own education books if everybody sort of was reading everybody else's shit and you could see how we're all contradicting the shit then truth comes where there's no contradiction so um, this is what nobody's talking about and it is how you perceive your reality and it is through dimensions right now we are in um, the fifth dimension experiencing the fourth dimension you have to be in one dimension looking down in on yourself so you're always going to be like this fish in a fish bowl, but to see who you are, or how you relate to your world, you got to sort of be outside of that fish bowl, looking in on yourself. So you're actually always outside of the dimension you're experiencing. Right now, we're experiencing three dimensional objects moving in time. So that's the fourth dimension. In order to see and perceive and you know experience that dimension, you're in the fifth dimension. So where we're about to go to, what this 2001 test is, is we're jumping into the sixth dimension, looking and experiencing everything in the fifth dimension. And that Mayan calendar is sort of pointing you in the right direction that it's going to be the end of time. <laughs> you know, so what does that mean? It means not the end of this world, although it could be if we don't evolve, if we don't get it. Um, but if we do get it, then it will be the end of how we perceive time. What is time? Kind of made a few videos about it. Nobody's really paying attention to that. Time is a measurement. That's all it is. It's uh, a measurement of how long it takes from one object, one three-dimensional object moving you know from one direction to another from point A to point B how long does that take well it's a measurement of time um, all particles are a me you know it's 3d it, it, it's it's all particles all stuff is a measurement of time so therefore thought is also energy and how fast energy moves in time is still a measurement of time. So how fast your thoughts go 
how thought how fast you can have a thought and and perceive an object moving in time um, is the value of how much energy you got going on and right now we're all operating in a negative energy we're all um, so what actually is moving stuff what, what what's making everything move problems <laughs> You know, this is why Deepak Chopra says that we're all going to be mummified mummies if we don't have any problems because we only wake up every day to overcome our problems. So we're in the process of uh, developing a hell of a lot of problems. You know, while you think everything is going real good, all you're doing is developing the problem that you're not able to perceive and comprehend. So we were in a stage of developing and ignoring problems and watching the move in time. Um, so basically if you want to really boil it down to all three dimensional objects are nothing but problems moving to a space where you see the solution. So it's how fast can you get to see the problems and see the solutions instantly. And um, the one of the comments that was made is that everything seems to be moving so slowly. Um, yes, what's moving so slowly is your ability to see the solution to a problem. Everything's happening all at once, you just can't see it. 99% um, of everything to deal with reality is invisible. So that means, you know, the solution is sort of invisible. It's, it's invisible to you. You only can see and perceive the problem, but you can't see and perceive the solution. But it doesn't mean that it's not there. You just don't have the comprehension. You don't have the understanding. You don't have all of the information. It is a lack of information because every problem, if you haven't noticed, um, gets solved as soon as you give it enough information. So. In order to solve all problems, all you're looking for is the information. That's why we're looking for truth. That's why we're searching. That's why, you know, news ain't giving you the truth. So you're on YouTube and you're doing some searches. You may think it's a waste of time, but what you're really doing is looking for more information. As soon as you get the information that you need, you kind of will wake up. You know, so it is a sharing and perceiving information that solves your problem that you are experiencing and the speed at which that happens is only time so what that means is when we jump out of this reality of only perceiving problems moving very slowly in time what we're going to be masters of is you know seeing solutions as soon as you see the problem so that means that we'll never ever see problems anymore all we're going to be seeing is solutions. Now, kind of look at our world right now. You know, kind of see that everything is nothing but one big problem. So where we're going to evolve to is enjoying the solutions. We're going to be participating in all aspects of the solutions. Kind of look at, uh, here's one example that um, everything is just your perceptions of stuff. Um, there was a company, TELUS, phone company, corporation, don't happen to like them but they had a massive, massive layoff. Now, the majority of people that got laid off were all in the, caught up in the problem. Oh my God, this is so big and bad. Oh my God, I'm gonna lose my house. Oh my God, all of this bullshit is, you know, is going on, it's big and bad. And they stuck in it and they got into a depression. They kept saying the same messages over and over again that everything's hopeless and helpless. But there's a small percentage of people that said, this is an opportunity. This is where I can actually make more money because while they laid off a whole pile of people that were doing work that still needed to be done, that what they tell us wanted to do was contract that work out to other people. So these few people that said, ah, this is an opportunity, they're the ones that started setting up businesses and getting the contracts for the work that still needed to be done. And they got wealthy really, really fast because they were smart. They were focused on the solutions. They seen opportunity. So that's where um, we need to sort of make this jump. Right now, there's a hell of a lot of problems. Pick a problem. Generally, any problem that you experience, you are the solution to that problem. 
And the one that faces the fact that, hey, this is a problem, the one who faces it and doesn't get caught up in that problem but is caught up in the solution is the one that's going to start the first opportunity. It's not, you know, a doom and gloom. It's opportunity. The universe is hiring. There's a hell of a lot of problems. We need to get to work solving some problems, you know. So as soon as we start uh, uh, recognizing to jump into the solutions, then it's not going to be doom and gloom. We're all unemployed <laughs> when you know, there's so much friggin' work to do. But we don't know how to get ourselves moving. We move with money. Um, trying to work out that problem, and I'm trying to do it with, with water, uh, it kind of took a bad direction. Well, not really a bad direction. Everything is nothing but a direction and gives you more information. And you test something out to see how it works. And if it doesn't work, then you, you know. I've already kind of noticed that it was starting something at the top and, you know, problem solving from top down, kind of bullshit because everything starts from center, from the bottom. So it is like should have started from the bottom and worked my way up. Um, which is what I'm kind of doing by doing this YouTube channel is, you know, <laughs> ain't no producers, ain't, you know, interested in doing informative documentaries or films that actually enlighten us. Why? Because the corporate world doesn't really want you knowing all of that stuff because everybody that's making money kind of has to lose their job because everything they're doing is wrong. Um, so the ones that have all of the money, they're going to kind of, you know, they got to sort of crash and burn. But the ones that have no jobs, those are the ones that need to be supported. Those are the ones that, you know, like as soon as we get ourselves back to work, then everything changes. But we have to get to work doing something that's right. Um, so that's why I did starting this YouTube channel is just to sort of put out a lot of information that we all need to know to get this sort of awakening and see the opportunities available. A lot of this shit is uh, about using water. Water could be our new bank account. Water could be our new government system, but we all have to own that government. Can't be done by me. Um, so I am going to sort of take another direction with this. Instead of doing producing um, a documentary, which anybody that's looking, if they really wanted to get involved in it, it's still going to happen. But it's, you know, anybody that sees the opportunity that that would be the most watched video that would go across the planet. So if you ever want to do a video that is going to be the biggest hit going, then this is, you know, give me a call. But until somebody sees that opportunity, I'm going to be starting at the bottom and seeing how many people actually want to get back to work distributing water because I think a lot of people are unemployed and there's a lot of wealth that can be made by distributing water. You don't have to have an investment for it. You just have to have a will to want to do it. And if you do, so I got to, you know, do a lot of setup for that. But uh, it is just a matter of putting a lot of one ads out there and seeing how many people want to get back to work. Then all they have to do is uh, find clients. You know, if anybody's buying water, you know, if you want better water, cheaper water, why not buy it locally and put some people to work in your own community? It is uh, sort of a, a really, really easy plan. I just got to get to it. So that's what I'm working on. We're about to jump into the sixth dimension. It will happen, but you got to kind of live <laughs> to get there. Peace out.